Okay friends, let's get started on our job. One of the first things you want to do is safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the wheels are off the ground and it's a good idea to have the suspension hanging. After you've done that, if you happen to have a hubcap, go ahead and remove that. Continue on to removing all four of your 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. Now that the wheel's off, we have a nice clear view of our tie rods. The first thing we're going to do is come right here. This is considered your jam nut. Spray that down with some penetrant. Allow that to do its job. And then I'll continue on over here to the outer tie rod end nut. We'll spray that with penetrant as well. The next thing that I do is I use some nice long pliers. I'll grab right onto that jam nut and continue by turning it clockwise to break it free from the outer tie rod end. Generally for your outer tie rod end, you're going to find you have a locking cotter pin. Go ahead and remove that and then remove your mounting nut. Use a 17 millimeter to remove your mounting nut. Now typically for this, I'll take my nut and I'm going to start it back on a couple good threads. The next thing we need to do is cause some vibration to try to break the tie rod end stud free from the knuckle. At this point, we're going to continue on by removing the outer tie rod end from the inner tie rod end. As we start turning this counterclockwise to remove it, Count the amount of rotations. Essentially, every time this stud faces up, it's another rotation. One, two, and so on. Go ahead and write that number down. Now we're going to move along to removing our jam nut. To do that, you're going to use a 19 millimeter socket to remove this, but what you'll find is the inner tie rod end stud spins with it. Go ahead and use some locking pliers to hold the inner tie rod end still. Now let's continue with some long nose pliers, grab onto the outer clamp for the bellows boot, give it a squeeze, remove it. Give it a quick inspection. Typically, it's a good idea to reuse these. If it's not reusable, you can use a wire tie. Now let's continue on with a hammer and a long pry bar. We're going to be using the pry bar to break free the inner clamp. If you were to look down along where my pry bar is, along the bellows boot, you're going to find an ear for the inner clamp. The clamp is a single time use. Just go ahead and use the pry bar and your hammer. Break it free so you can remove the bellows boot. Let's grab that clamp off of there. Set that aside. Now we can grab onto the bellows boot. We're going to give it a twist and a tug and try to slide it off of the power steering rack and inner tie rod end. Now that I've finished with that, I'll continue with my lubricant and on the inner tie rod end, you're going to find that you have a singular groove pretty close to the center of it. Go ahead and put a bead of lube along that as well. The next thing you want to do is straighten out the wheel so it's in its original position. Now it's time to put on our bellows boot. For this, I'm going to take a wire tie and put it right around the inner aspect. I'm going to make sure that I don't over tighten it because I do need this to slide over the power steering rack. Let's take that and we'll slide it all the way down onto the power steering rack at the end there. Just slide this up on here. I'm going to put it onto the power steering rack. Once I'm sure that it's completely around the power steering rack all the way in there, I'll make sure that I tighten up that wire tie as tight as possible.
trim off the excess. Assuming your original clamp was good, go ahead and slide that right on there. Now let's apply some copper never seize to the threads. Install your jam nut. Now we can install our outer tie rod end. When we put this on here, you want to make sure you install it the exact amount of turns as it took to remove it originally. One, two, three, so on. Slide that tie rod up into your knuckle. Put on your castle nut. Bottom it out. Once you have this bottomed out, torque it to 36 foot pounds. Once you have it torqued to 36, the next thing you want to do is pay attention to the slots on the nut and the hole that goes through the stud of the tie rod. You want to get them to match up so you can slide your locking cotter pin through. If for some reason it's not lined up properly, continue tightening until the very next slot does. Peen that over so there's no way this nut can loosen up on its own while you're driving down the road. Now let's move along to our jam nut. We'll bottom this out against the outer tie rod end. Once you bottom that out, we're going to continue tightening it. To tighten it, you can either use a 7 8 wrench or even a 22 millimeter. But you also make sure you use an 18 millimeter wrench to hold the outer tie rod end so you don't damage it while you're tightening this. The next thing you want to do is just make sure that the tie rod end is flat, level with the ground, and not twisted. All right, now you just want to double check everything. Make sure you torqued it as required. Let's get the wheel back up on here. Start on all four of our lug nuts. We'll bottom them out. Get the wheel safely back on the ground, and then we'll torque each of the lug nuts to 76 foot pounds. All right, the wheel's safely back on the ground. Let's torque these in a crisscross manner to 76 foot-pounds. <laughs> Torqued. If you happen to have a hubcap, go ahead and put it on now. The area you want to pay attention to is the area that has the valve stem hole. Line it up with the valve stem on the wheel and then drive it into place. Make sure it's secure all the way around so it doesn't fall off while you're driving down the road. Okay friend, we got the car back together. At this point, you want to safely take it for a road test. Listen for any funny noises and get yourself safely down to your local alignment shop. Thanks for watching.